Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we're heading all the way back to 1994 to take a look at the Marvel Action Hours, the Fantastic Four, the animated series, Wave 1, featuring a ton of characters that you probably know, and maybe a ton of characters that you don't quite know, right? But, like I said, this is based off the 94 Fantastic Four, the animated series. And it was largely okay. Season 1 was hit and miss. Season 2, they vastly improved, changed the look of the show just a bit, added a few more guest stars, we'll just say. But I really like the old-fashioned light blue and the white. That's what I like to see for the Fantastic Four colors. However, I didn't mind the more black on blue sort of Batman the Animated Series style though when they came back for season two, that's for sure. The Toy Biz line though was largely hit and miss we will say, but there's a lot of gems in this line to be sure. And especially for having, let's just say, the remnants of an old Fantastic Four card, it's pretty cool as seen on the Marvel Action Hour and really awesome artwork. Just the layout, very reminiscent, Spider-Man, the animated series, Hulk, Iron Man, everything that was going on for Toy Biz in those days. You can screen grab this if you want to learn more about Terex, that's for sure. And then you get to see Wave 1 of Fantastic Four and Wave 1 of Iron Man, the animated series, which, yes, that is coming as well. And if for some reason you're in 1994 and you want to look it up in the store, here's the barcode for Terex as well. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. We're about to go all for four. This is a look at the Fantastic Four, the animated series, Wave 1 by Toy Biz. So we'll kick things off with Victor Von Doom. Well, that's Dr. Doom to you. A really cool looking update to a previous Toy Biz figure that, yes, of course, being based off the look that he had in the animated series for the Fantastic Four, I would say, yeah, they kept it rather simple. It looks like Dr. Doom, very classic Dr. Doom. He even appeared on Spider-Man the Animated Series, and he knows I love that. There's Spider-Man, of course, kicking Dr. Doom in the face. Go watch Secret Wars, you'll know what I'm talking about. But with Dr. Doom, he came with one accessory. It was a blaster gun, which kind of, sort of, appeared in the show. Borderline Jack Kirby-ish style, so I definitely dig it. Lots of sculpt work in it. And then Dr. Doom himself looking all spiffy. Nice greens, nice silver-ish kind of paint. It's not quite Silver Surfer deco, but you get the idea. But it's it works with this character, and I totally dig it. I would say remove the cape, right? Just in terms of trying to get him to stand. You'll see what I'm talking about in a few seconds here. But yeah, largely the head would rotate on him. He had nice paint all over. Articulation in the arms. He only had a single jointed elbow and single jointed knees. Didn't move at the waist, nothing like that. But yeah, overall, like I said, painted nicely. Holds the gun nicely as well. That's always cool to see, even though it's just a pre-posed hand. But the gimmick here is really interesting, I will just say. Just kind of shoots his arm out, which, yeah, okay. It's like he, uh, he's grabbing something or force pushing you, something like that. I wouldn't say that's immediately what I think of with Doctor Doom, you know what I mean, in terms of a action gimmick, but... Go ahead, reposition the legs, get his cape back on him, and he, he kind of stands okay. You kind of have to hunch him. If you do want to pair him up with Spider-Man, however, a la Spider-Man the Animated Series, he goes quite well. And if you wanted to just pop Spider-Man, yeah, that works well. <laughs> I love that guy. He just annihilated him. But yeah, Secret Wars, Fantastic Fours, it's a nice looking Doctor Doom. Next up, we have Black Agar, Boltagon, or... Black Bolt, we'll just call him that. I don't think anybody should ever call him those names. But yes, Black Bolt did appear in the animated series in a three-parter in Season 2. And he looked all kinds of Jack Kirby. And this figure is actually really cool in terms of looking very Jack Kirby. Now, in the show, he was more black on blue. This is more blue on light blue. On the backside, you get to see how they attached his little glidey wings right there. But I really like the colors for this guy. I think it works in terms of Black Bolt. Very old-fashioned Marvel. I totally dig that. I for sure thought you would squeeze his legs to pop the wings, but nope. You push the little button right here on his waist, and it pops open, and it's very cool. It's very anticlimactic, I'll tell you that. It's like a boop, you know what I mean? But nice wings, 
They go out a little bit. He's got articulation at the elbows and the knees and such. The head will twist. It all works together. Very pre-posed. But you're going to have a hard time standing this guy. Just saying in that sense. Get a nice little flight stand for him. Because yeah, he's going to go tumbling either way. But it's a cool looking Black Bolt. Next up, we have the Silver Sentry of the Spaceways, Norn Red, the Silver Surfer. And I remember when this guy came out, it was like, oh my god, I gotta get a Silver Surfer figure. Now, there is a Silver Surfer the Animated Series, which we will talk about at a later date. A couple more figures to go for that guy, but this Silver Surfer in particular, I picked up at Pick and Save, for those of you who remember that store. He was actually a figure, a deluxe sort of figure. He was literally a buck when I got him. He was 99 cents, and he came with a really cool Silver Surfer interactive CD-ROM. It had comic book stuff and photos and lots of little interactive features that featured the Silver Surfer, which for the Fantastic Four, the animated series, it's the same exact figure. He's got this really cool surfboard to him. It's got a little ring right there to attach to your finger and you can zoom him all around. As a kid, I have no idea why I didn't know this. I totally thought it was just like an attachment to go around his waist and it's like weapon storage basically. But yeah, go figure. As a kid, I couldn't even get that. But the Silver Surfer looks fantastic. First Silver Surfer, still one of my favorite, even though he has screw holes on the back of him. Really nice reflective chrome paint, and it's largely still in great shape. He had articulation at the head, the shoulders, his little arm right here would kind of rotate. He had a single jointed elbow here, legs would kick out, single jointed knees. So in either sense, he looked great. Kind of got a little burn spot on his crotch, just saying. I don't know why, he always had that. But you just fix him to his board, the little peg holes right there. And you can start zipping him around the galaxy or heralding for Galactus to eat planets and kill millions. Whatever you want to do. But as a kid, you could do that and just serve Galactus willingly in hopes to save Shalabal or whatever the story was for back then. But I love the look of this guy. Again, one of my favorite Silver Surfers. Now I'm going to say it all dang day, you're pretty gay for Mole Man, right? Nobody's gay for Mole Man, especially with his Moloid. And this guy, yeah, he pretty much resembled his look for the animated series. A little bit different hair, of course, but it's just a big fat old guy in a green pajama costume. I don't know, with a cape. The Moloid is pretty cool. They did a pretty good job of capturing that from animation. A little bit lighter skin, of course. He's gone completely Simpsons in this motif, but yeah, he's got a little paint on him and the eyes and his little crotch piece. <laughs> The Mole Man himself is one of the best figures, I think, just in terms of being a wackadoo old man that wields a stick, by the way. Yes, another yellow baton stick, which fits perfectly into his hand, and his whole gimmick is that he's going to twirl it and beat you up. But he's a very sturdy figure. He's a big chunky brick of a figure, and that's what I want to see in old Mole Man. He had some articulation at the shoulders and single-jointed elbows, but unfortunately on this side with the twirling side... Just basically at the wrist, I guess you could say. He would kick out, nothing at the knees, and he had rotation at the head. And you could pop the cape off if you want, a la Doctor Doom. And you could see, yeah, it's, just, it's a really weird jumpsuit for old Mole Man. Where do you get a green jumpsuit like that? But the whole gimmick here is that you twirl his hand, right? You just kind of do it till it can't goes no more. And then you got this flesh-colored button that I wish was green. And he does his little baton twirling action to summon the Moloids or the mole people, or whatever you want to call him. It, it's, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's pretty self-explanatory, but in either case, it's cool. Now, I would say that, yeah, he pretty much matches up in terms of height-wise. If you wanted to go the Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic route, you can even belt old Reed Richards in the head. It's not the best gimmick, I'll say, but it definitely makes me gay for Mole Man. Next up, it's clobberin' time for Mr. Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing. Nice big orange rocky monster man that flew in outer space and came back looking like this, unfortunately. Pretty much resembles the cartoon for season one. There's a figure that we'll take a look at in later waves that kind of matches a bit better. And unfortunately, we'll just say, if you were looking to kind of pair him up with Spider-Man the Animated Series the way I was back in the day... Of course, when they cameoed on Spider-Man the Animated Series in Secret Wars, they had completely new jumpsuits. Of course they did, right? But that doesn't stop this Wave 1 thing 
from looking all cool. I mean, to have a thing back in the day. You have to think about this. There weren't a whole heck of a lot of Fantastic Four figures. And this really opened up the door. The paint is okay. He's got the Carnage Spider-Man the Animated Series little thumb mover there on his back to activate his features. You can see the steel pins in him. He had articulation at the head. The face was okay. We'll just say he spun at the waist. And, of course, that's how you got his little gimmick to move. He's supposed to punch in Floria and ground you like he was going to hit Terex right here in the face. It's not the best. Like... It's okay, but it's not the best in terms of it's clobbering time. It's more like it's moving and shaking time. He had single-jointed elbows, single-jointed knees, which are very gappy right there. As you can see, he's a big rock monster. Cut him some slack. But in terms of the height, I would say Mr. Fantastic, even though he's a little bit taller, the scaling kind of varied in the animated series. I would say it fits and it doesn't at the same time. But in terms of a lack of Marvel action figures from back in the day, it was a nice first entry for the thing. Which, of course, brings us to Reed Richards himself, Mr. Fantastic. All go for four right there. He came with one accessory, and he had some rubbery arms. And again, season one, yeah, definitely nailed the likeness. Season two, more of that dark blue on black action. But in either case, I'm going to say it again and again, did not match Spider-Man the Animated Series. However, his little silver harness right here with all the patches and the straps to make Rob Leafield go, wow, that's a cool looking figure. It was a little gummy. It worked. It was cool. But in terms of how this figure looked, I always loved the look of this guy. This guy actually came from a garage sale years ago. I found him in a little baggie full of other figures and he was just sitting in there all nice and pretty. So I had to have him. Now you can see, like, there's not really articulation in the arms. They're very gummy arms. And it's supposed to be you stretch them and whatnot. They have gone yellow over the years. It's just the degradation of the material for which he is made out of. He's starting to tear and crack a little bit too. But rest assured, he has a nice spot on the shelf for his ailments. Of course, single jointed knees, nice white boots. Very cool overall. And I love the wing tips on old Reed Richards. Now to put his little harness backpack future time machine whatever thing this is supposed to be from the comic slash animated series it fits on him well it looks cool while it falls over his chest it does still show the four emblem it's nice they thought ahead on that it's a very cool looking reed richards and thus we come to my favorite figure of the wave one fantastic four we have terax and this guy is awesome yes he kind of looks like he stepped out of the Marvel animated properties for the 90s, of course. He does come with his flying purple asteroid, and it does have two peg holes to situate him on top. Comes with wheels. You can glide him along. This is an awesome accessory, by the way. He also comes with his silvery cosmic axe, which looks like it stepped right out of the cartoon slash the comics. So I definitely appreciate that. But Terex himself, I just like the look of this guy. The reds, the yellows, the blues, the big purple face gambit harness thing <laughs> it works and he's just a very cool looking figure again a nice little brick of a figure but the design is so cool he will rotate at the head nothing at the waist his arms will go up and down with single jointed elbows you might want to just make sure this thing doesn't go popping off seen lots of terax figures with this missing so just make sure that's situated right in there he'll kick out has single jointed knees and that's it as far as his articulation however when you want to herald him up i would say i expect terex to just be a little bit bulkier mr fantastic is even taller than he is it's around the same height as the thing but toy biz days you know what i'm saying but this is my favorite part right you take his purple asteroid which again such a fantastic idea right here go figure fantastic four load him up give him his axe and then you're going to fly him into the other characters and murder them. It's going to be fantastic, right? Galactus is coming. You got to make way. And you just let him loose and he just annihilates everybody. Even himself, right? Just quick kick the thing and then Mr. Fantastic. And bingo, bango, you've taken over the Earth and now Galactus rules all. <laughs> Wave 1 is a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. These are great figures. Each of them have little fun gimmicks that, of course plagued action figures back in the day for better for worse i kind of wish more action figures these days had these little gimmicks to be honest with you i like these old timey things and they're a lot of fun they give a little personality to all these old action figures 
Silver Surfer, forever. He will always be a favorite of mine. Mole Man. <laughs> no one's gay for Mole Man. Maybe the Moloid, though. Who knows, right? Doctor Doom, he's got some problems here and there with his legs and standing and such. The gimmick on him is kind of weird, but it is what it is. And Terax, very, very cool. I love the moving asteroid. Black Bolt, he's very simple, but I love the colors on that guy. Thing, nice first entry for Thing action figures, right, for this Fantastic Four wave. But the gimmick is kind of ho-hum, we'll just say. And Mr. Fantastic, with all his stretchy ability and his harness, yeah, he's not too shabby at all. Love the wingtips, Mr. Reed Richards. So that's going to do it for Wave 1 of the Toy Biz 1994 Fantastic Four, the animated series. And I'm curious to know what you guys think about this line. Do you have it? Do you have some? All? Do you need to get them now? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Fantastic Four. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, if you'd like to see more Fantastic Four Waves, Silver Surfer, Iron Man, leave comments down below. Tell me which are your favorite figures. They are coming. They're coming slowly. But we're going to finish out Spider-Man before the end of the year. I guarantee. And when we do... Let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.